Now let's take a closer look at Israel, at its current situation. The country has been attacked by its greatest foe. For the first time ever, Iran launched a direct attack, which is a bold statement, and it puts Israel in an awkward position for a number of reasons, not least because of the optics. This is Israel we are talking about, the most technologically advanced nation in West Asia, a not-so-secret nuclear power, and America's best friend. Israel just got slapped by Iran, as the Ayatollah puts it. A nation seen as a backwater theocracy, a country that has been hammered by sanctions for years. The attack does not make Israel's government look good, even if they foiled it. Even if 99% of Iran's drones and missiles were shot down, at the end of the day, Iran did dare to attack Israel directly, and it gives Netanyahu a new political headache. Because as you know, he's already unpopular and has been so for a while now. Before the Hamas war, Netanyahu tried to confront Israel's judiciary. He was accused of attacking democracy, and it led to widespread protests, the biggest in the country's history. Then Hamas attack, the Hamas attack took place last October. More than 1,200 people died. 250 Israelis were taken hostage. Netanyahu was accused of failing to protect Israel, which again led to protests. What do you think will happen now? Iran dared to attack Israel publicly for the first time. Netanyahu will be accused of making Israel look weak. And there will likely be protests again, this time by his core supporters, the conservative, security-first crowd that makes up his base. If Netanyahu alienates them, he loses everything. And not just during the next election. It could happen even before that. Because Netanyahu is part of a coalition government. Together, they have 64 parliamentary seats. The total is 120. They have 64. So it's just a four-seat advantage. Now, Netanyahu's Likud party has only half the seats in this coalition. They have only 32 seats. So any one of his allies can topple him if they choose to. That makes him extremely susceptible to political pressure, and that pressure has begun. This is Itamar Ben-Gavir, one of Netanyahu's allies. Ben-Gavir's party controls seven parliamentary seats. And this is what he posted on Sunday. Impressive defense so far. Now we need a crushing attack. This is another ally of Netanyahu, Bezalel Smotrich. His party controls another seven seats. And this was the message that he posted on Sunday. If our response resonates throughout the Middle East for generations to come, we will win. So basically, Netanyahu's political partners want him to attack Iran hard. And he may have to listen to them. But it's not just the hardliners urging him to respond. This is what Israel's army chief has said. As we look ahead, we consider our steps. And this launch of so many missiles, cruise missiles and drones into the territory of State of Israel will be met with a response. He's not talking politics, he's talking about security. If Israel does not respond, it sends a bad, bad message that anyone can quote-unquote slap Israel and get away with it. For a country surrounded by potential enemies, that kind of reputation may sound the death knell. And all this puts Netanyahu in a tricky situation. How does he protect Israel's reputation? How does he reassure his supporters? How does he placate his coalition? Can all this be done without starting a full-blown war? It seems the only thing holding him back is his war cabinet. It's a cross-party five-member panel. These five members coming from different parties. And reports say that this war cabinet is divided. They're meeting again today for the third time in three days, but they have not managed to finalize a response yet. Why is that? Perhaps because of this man, Benny Gantz. Gantz is a member of the cross-party war cabinet. He's also a former deputy prime minister, former defense minister, and former army chief. Gantz has been around the block. He understands the complexity of the situation. He says Israel will respond, and I'm quoting, when the time is right. It seems he does not want an immediate response that leads to war. So Benny Gantz could be the one holding them back. But will Netanyahu actually heed his advice? Or will the increasingly unpopular prime minister drag his country into a wider war? Guess we'll find out in the days to come. Iran has launched a direct attack 
from Iranian soil towards the state of Israel.